Okay, next up is mapping it out. Matt and Tanya go on a train ride without telling anyone. This causes Harry and Stacy to worry a lot. The kids learn that they must always tell the, an adult where they are going. So, yeah. I don't know. I watched this episode yesterday just so I would, like, get caught up and I barely remember it at all. So it was Schemer's idea to, like, do this, but, yeah. I really shouldn't have done these uh, Shining Time Station videos because there's really not that much to talk about. Mostly because I can't find a good description on a website that is secure. So, yeah. The Runaway. Thomas doesn't feel well uh, and is sent to uh, the works for repairs. Duck fills in for him and becomes friends with Annie and Clarabelle and the passengers. When Thomas returns, he finds he still has problems. Oh my god, his new brakes are feel stiff, causing him to overshoot platforms. Percy takes a plunge. Oh dear god. Is this the same thing happening to, like, Percy now? He, like, falls into the water or something? I don't know, it's happened with Gordon, and it's happened with Thomas, so it's bound to happen with anyone else. Okay, what's the next episode? I think we're almost done with season one, actually. So, yeah. Things that go... Gahuga in the night. I don't understand this title. Weirdest freaking title ever. I don't know. Everybody come, camps out at the station at night. Skamer uses the occasion to scare everyone, uh, but his plan backfires, and at the end, it is him who is scared of the dark. Um, this isn't even the Halloween special. This is kind of ironic. This is the second to last episode of season one, and the first episode of season two was the Halloween special, and yet this is right here. I don't know. The episodes, the Thomas stories are Percy's ghostly trick where Percy, like, pretending to be, like, the ghost of, like, Big Bad Wolf or something. I don't know. It was so weird. And Thomas does make his O face in this one. Which I didn't like. Wooly Bear. I don't know about that one. Uh, no, not the last one of season one. This one's too sad. It's called, This Is, Is This The End? So this is where, uh, 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 the station's closing down, and it's really sad. But, yeah. It's a really sad episode. They gotta close it down. The stories are saved from scrap and a new friend for Thomas. I don't even know what these ones are about. But, yeah. At the end of the episode, Mr. Conductor leaves and... Like, he leaves his hat behind, and, uh, J.B. King, the owner of Shining Time Station, he finds the hat, and he remembers, uh, meeting Mr. Conductor a long time ago when he was very little. So, yeah, he keeps the station open, everyone's happy, yeah. And now the Christmas special, Shining Time Station, tis a gift. See, in this episode, uh, it's full of crap going on, lots of crap going on. I mean, it's not awful crap, but it's okay, I guess. Lots of stuff going on. Yeah. So, first of all, there's this guy named Mr. Nicholas. Obviously, Santa. Let's just say this guy's Santa. And, yeah, he's waiting for a train called the Northern Star. But, apparently, everyone thinks that he's gone crazy. Because there are no trains coming by at Christmas time. And at the same time, there's a girl named Vicky who everyone hates because she's so mean. And yeah, there's some really sad moments. Like, when like everyone wants her to go away, she's like all sad. Or when she accidentally like knocks over the Christmas tree and everyone thinks she did it on purpose. It's so sad. Yeah. What about the song they, she sings at the end? I forget what it was called. Yeah. The Thomas stories... <laughs> Well, what can I say about the Thomas stories? There's some weird thing uh, going on with this. On the uh, TV version of the episode, it has the uh, Thomas stories called 
Terrence, the tractor, and Thomas's Christmas party. But on the VHS, uh, Thomas's Christmas party is the first story, and the second one is one called Thomas and the Missing Christmas Tree. And Terrence is still mentioned on the video. So, yeah. It's just so weird, though. Also, I don't get it, though. Right after that comes Season 2, and the first Season 2 episode is a Halloween special that aired on November 18th of 1991. After Halloween, by the way. It just seems so weird that they waited that long to make a new episode. Actually, friggin' last episode of Season 1 aired in June of 1989. Then the Christmas special aired in December of uh, 1990. And yeah... But yeah, it's basically Halloween, though. The episode starts up with Matt and Tanya writing to their cousins about what's been going on, though. Schemer's still here. Stacy's still here. Uh, Harry actually got re-signed, and now this guy named Billy Two Feathers is taking over. And uh, Mr. Conductor went to the North Pole to help out with Santa. But then they got Mr. Conductor's, like, cousin, I think. Yeah, there's always a Mr. Conductor in Shining Time Station. And this time he's played by George Carlin, known for doing inappropriate stand-up com comedy. And it's very inappropriate. So how did they get him on the show? I have no idea. Well, of course it's like Halloween and everyone's like getting ready and I didn't even notice this before, but Kara is played by the same person who played freaking Keisha on... The Magic School Bus. That show is freaking weird. If you want me to do a review on that show, well, I haven't even seen every episode of that show, though. Maybe I have to check it out sometime. At my old school, we were never allowed to end up in the toilet. That's literally what they say in one episode. <laughs> oh my god, I have so much to do say about that. Oh yeah, by the way, a guy played, uh, what's his name, Dan? Uh... Uh, what's his name? Ah, oh, jeez. Ah. Yeah, the person plays Dan on the show. Um, he died recently from pneumonia. It's so sad. I always thought Becky and Vicky were, like, the same person, though. I mean, they look exactly the same. So, yeah. Oh, what a tangled web. Oh, what a rain I would be. I hate that song. Mm. Oh my god. Oh my god, this freaking tablet. I really should have thought about doing this kind of video. Dan and Kara are pretend to have jobs and tell Becky that she uh, can have a party in the station. This caused them to run into trouble with J.B. King. Yeah, he's, like, still, like, wondering about Mr. Conductor and stuff. And does he even know that there's a different Mr. Conductor in this season, though? I mean, I don't even know if he met the Mr. Conductor from season one when he was little, or if it was even a different one, practically. But, yeah. I don't know. It just seems so weird. But, yeah. The stories are Diesel's Devious Deeds. Oh, jeez, I forgot about the stories in the Halloween one. The Halloween episode were Thomas, Percy, and the Dragon, and Percy's Ghostly Trick. If you notice, George Carlin actually re-recorded the lines for some of the uh, episodes, like this one. Kind of interesting. I don't know. Either way, both versions of Season 1 episodes are actually pretty hard to find. Yeah. It's true. These ones are devious... Diesel's Devious Deed, and No Joke for James. And No Joke for James, James tricks Thomas into thinking he was supposed to take the Express, but ends up getting into trouble for it. Of course. Yeah, by the way, in this season, in season three, they reuse stories from past episodes. It just gets so annoying, but thank God I don't have to talk about the stories again. But yeah. The magic is believing. Oh my god. Oh, uh, let's see if I have enough time. 
Uh, yeah. A Mazo, the magician, comes to visit. And he forgot all his tricks. Becky learns about magic when she discovers Mr. Conductor. Oh, she didn't even know about Mr. Conductor in the previous episodes? Oh my god. I have to check out this episode later. Billy helped Amazo more to be more confident, which helps which helped uh, the magician perform his tricks in front of an audience. Thomas stories are old iron and Edward's exploit. You mean like exploit content, like not for kids? Uh yeah, I'd rather not talk about it. Mm -hmm. Would not lose or draw. But I don't want to draw. Mm -hmm. I'm bad at drawing. I'm not like freaking Steve from Blue's Clues. I can't draw that well. No, seriously, I've watched Blue's Clues so many times. Draws the clues, and yeah, I'm still not good at drawing. Oh my god. What do you expect with a grown man drawing on a little kitty notebook with a crayon? A brown crayon, of all things. I mean, it's different colors sometimes. The kids enter a drawing contest. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, that's what. Ha, <laughs> very funny. Becky does not like her picture, so he asks Mr. Conductor to use his magic to draw her a nicer picture. Oh, yeah, it was about, like, cheating and stuff. Oh, my God, I remember this episode. This was so weird. Schemer steals Billy's ink to draw a self portrait, but finds out that it is disappearing ink. At the end, Becky learned to appreciate her original drawing, so, as she won third prize. Really? <laughs> I'm not, like, saying that, uh, like, winning is not important. I'm just saying third prize as probably last place. Now, I remember this one show where, uh, this, uh, like, baseball team, they were, they won second place, and then they're like, second place is almost first. And the dad's like, no, it's not. At least we tried our best. And their mom's like, that was their best? <laughs> oh my god. It was so weird, though. Uh, uh, sweet and sour. If I have enough time, yeah. The kids are selling lemonade, and cookies. I mean, it's not like that girl from Shiny, from all that, where she's trying to sell her lemonade and she starts crying when no one wants to buy it. Schemer and Schemey. Yeah, it's like Schemer's like nephew or something. I don't know. It's just so weird. Encourage them to raise the prices and sell low quality products. What? Oh my god. What? Oh my god. Oh my god. What? Mm -hmm. When Midge Smoot buys, uh, played by Bobo Lewis, buys, uh, some cookies and finds out how awful they taste, she gets mad at Schemer. Well, no wonder. I'll get mad at them, too. Thomas' stories are Donald Douglas and the Deputation. Hold on, I gotta pause this for a second. Achoo. Okay, I mean, is this, like, balding baby bop sneezing a lot on Barney? I don't know. Mr. Conductor has a cold, but still wants to go to the South Pole and visit his penguin friends. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, I think, like, when he, like, sneezes, his, like, magic gold dust, like, gets everywhere, and, like, some crazy stuff happens. Thomas stories are Trust Thomas and Whistles and Sneezes. I think it involves, like, Henry sneezing a lot or something. I don't know. Uh, one more... Nah, let's not do one more. We'll do it in the next video. See ya.